I was moving my group across a field to a wall and as we approached the wall is when I stepped on it. The first person to me was one of my machine gunners. He actually gave his weapon to um, the guy behind him and ran to me and started um, doing buddy aid and then my best friend who was my medic uh, came to me next. Then they put me on the chopper and that's when they finally put me to sleep. And then the next thing I remember is waking up in Germany. I saw a really strange number on my caller ID and um, it was the Department of the Army and they needed me to call them back at my earliest convenience and so I called them back right away and they said he had broken both arms, he had a C4 break in his neck and that he had lost both of his legs. From Germany I went, I came straight to Walter Reed and minutes after I got into my room at Walter Reed is when I saw Paige for the first time. I didn't know if I'd be kind of frightened or be afraid to touch him or be around him but I was just happy he was back no matter what condition he was in. In August of 2012 was finally when I started getting fitted for my prosthetics. I know for my wife and my mother, you know, seeing me walk for the first time, you know, it was a big moment in our family. Um, right now we're living in Opelika, Alabama, um, right outside of Auburn. And we're living in a, um, a small condo, small two bedroom condo. You know, the doors aren't, you know, as wide as they need to be. And there's carpet throughout the house. The hallways are pretty small. So I'm always bumping into things in, when I'm in my chair. And, you know, in our kitchen, the counter countertops are, would be normal height for, you know, a regular person and the cabinets are normal height and everything. Like if I'm cooking or something, sometimes I have to like stand on my nubs in my chair. I mean, the stove is right here. I mean, that's right at his face, you know? So if he has something here and then something on the, the back burner, then he's leaning over that. And that I don't like that at all. There's supposedly a handicapped shower, but I can't get my wheelchair into it. So since we've lived there, you know, I've only taken baths. Every time he gets in the tub, I'm always listening to make sure he gets in and out safely. Right now it works because he's young and he's strong. And as he gets older and he loses some of that strength, he's gonna need something so that someone doesn't have to physically pick him up. If you have the right environment, he doesn't need help. He can do it himself. The new home for Homes for Our Troops is just going to be um, so beneficial to our family. You know, the open floor plan, you know, and the kitchens, you know, the roll under sinks, those are going to be huge. The pull down cabinets in the bathrooms, you know, the, the therapeutic tub, the fact that there's going to be a roll in shower and I'll finally get to take a shower again. I love the idea of living somewhere. This is where we go at the end of every day. This is ours. We own it. This is where our children grow up. And nothing about it is too dangerous for a handicapped person to live in. You know, people still care. People care about the troops and they want the best for the troops. I appreciate it more than anything, really, and just knowing that you know, we're taken care of and that we didn't go through all of this just to be in debt and just to have to break ourselves to find a safe place to live. And um, I'm just really, really thankful for it.